Yeah, good morning, Amit sir. Yes, hello all, good morning. Good morning, Gaurav. So, uh, yeah, good to go. So, today is the day one, guys, for this weekend batch for SDN. So, so, over to you, you can continue with the session. Okay, thank you. Just a moment. And guys, one more thing, the people who enrolled for this program, uh, they might be receive a one email from support uh, with the subject line of lab credential. So the course and all, all the lab is there in that particular portal. So you can check that also. If in, if in case you didn't get the email, yes, 100% you'll get it. But if in case still somebody missed or something, you can check with the support team. Okay, hello again. Good morning, Amit here. Um, I hope I'm audible. Uh, just can someone please confirm and chat if I'm good, uh, if you can hear me well? Yes. Okay, good. Thanks. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining. Uh, welcome to Networkings. Okay, so uh, just a brief introduction for myself. Uh, I've been working into uh, service provider networks, uh, networking for uh, more than 15 years, uh, mainly into MPLS VPNs and uh, SVNs. Okay, so I hope uh, uh, everybody has a brief uh, information at least about uh, networks, uh, like uh, on how, what is router, what is switch, and what is IP addressing. So sort of these basic things. And just in case, if, even if not, uh, you feel free to uh, uh, interrupt me or feel free to ask on chat uh, in case you have any query, any doubt, okay? Thanks. Uh, let me start. Let me share my screen. Okay. So I hope uh, my screen is visible, right? Yes, it's visible. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Okay, good. So let's start. Uh, good morning. Uh, hello, good morning. Julius here from Philippines. Yeah, thank you for joining. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, so we have just started. Um, so it's very first uh, PowerPoint you will see on your screen. I hope my screen is visible. Yeah, we're okay. good. Good, thanks. Okay, so 
Um, this is basically we are going through the uh, the in, in very brief the course introduction, like what would be the different uh, components which we will uh, learn about uh, SGVN, like SGVN fundamentals, how to deploy controllers, how to deploy SGVN overall, uh, configuring the SGVN environment, uh, deploying zero touch provisioning. We will discuss in detail about this. Um, configuring SGVN policies, a very important topic in SGVN, SGVN policies, and operating the SGVN devices and software, uh, like what all commands we can run on CLI, or on GUI, uh, graphical interface uh, through vManage and uh, uh, software processing like iOS upgrades and maintenance. Troubleshooting the SD-WAN, um, what all problems we see on day-to-day -day basis and how we can um, uh, avoid them, how we can counter them. Okay. So two parts, uh, basics, advanced. Uh, in basics, uh, fundamentals, installation, um, introduction to be managed, certificates, uh, serial number file, sort of those things. So we will go through all all of these in detail. Um, we have different type of routing with SDMAN like PGP, OSPF, connected and static routing, um, AAA, TACX, uh, DHCP server. And when we talk about SDMAN advance, uh, we have policy, um, local policy, uh, multiple transports, multiple van link, how we can use uh, like mix of transports, maybe MPLS and the public internet, TLOC extension, uh, topology, different type of uh, policies, SDVN net, multi-tenancy. Okay, so the very first slide, uh, why exactly we need SDVN? What is SDVN? So maybe let me quickly go through what is SDVN and why we need SDVN. Um, when we say why, there were several limitations with legacy architecture, with legacy networking, that we needed something to overcome, some, some sort of automation. Most of the things we do with SGVAN, some of them are possible with Python scripting as well, or maybe with different scripting languages. But with SGVAN, what the difference is, we get easy to use interface. If you want, you can learn Python to do the things, even integrating with SDVAN. Even if you don't want, there are things already established on GUI, which you can achieve uh, instead of Python. You know, if you don't want to learn Python scripting, I would not suggest that, go for that, that is must. But even if, until you don't have skills on Python maybe, till then you can, um, I mean, work comfortably with SDVAN. Or for all sort uh, of I'm, sir, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. And uh, one thing I just forgot to tell you, uh, we have a one more batch. Uh, just you said that Python. So we have a one more batch, like a Python for network engineer, starting mm -hmm. from the very basic. And uh, we have a like a CCNP and auto that how to automate SD band uh, through Python. So that batch is also going on, and we are starting today itself only. Just if in case somebody is interested for that. Yes, I would recommend that strongly because. Let's say if we are working with SDVAN, we are use, doing 100% of things with SDVAN or let's say with any any flavor of SDVAN, we can achieve, let's say 50% more in case we have, we learn Python, we know Python, we can integrate Python with SDVAN. So that's, that's an additional advantage, I would say, on the top of SDVAN, okay? So in traditional uh, networking, let's coming on to why we need SDVAN. So, in traditional van, we could not really use the different type of transports, let's say MPLS link, broadband, or let's say lease line, or let's say wireless van link on 4G or LTE, we cannot really mix them. So this is one of the advantages that we can use diverse transports with SD van that on a site, let's say this is a branch site, we have an edge device, be it router in very simple example, Let's say we have connected one MPLS link and one internet line. On the branch, this is for the case of SDVAN. For the case of SDVAN, we can connect one MPLS line, one internet line. We can use them both equally, okay, to connect to the other sites or to connect to the other locations. It can be data center, it can be cloud, it can be SaaS services, or it can be internet. So with traditional 
architecture of networking, we could not really use different type of transports to share the data, to transfer the data across the multiple locations. So let's say in very, very simple example, in very usual use case, you will see one branch site which has connectivity to the data center from there it exits out to internet so it has dependency on the data center internet be it the capacity be it the availability be it of performance so it has all sort of dependency on the data center because branch site it cannot mix multiple different sort of transports if it is mpls it would only need it would only need to use mpls to go to remote sites but for the case of SD WAN, we can mix multiple transports. Okay, so because we mostly rely in traditional networking, we mostly rely on MPLS circuits instead of internet. The reason is security because internet is less secure and MPLS is fully secure. But in cloud-centric world, in the latest use in in the latest technologies, this using only MPLS is not feasible or using either only internet is also not feasible. We need to mix them like we can use MPLS for critical traffic, let's say voice or any any latency or RTD critical traffic, and we can use internet for less priority traffic. Any questions so far? None. Okay, good, thanks. Okay. Good, so let's move ahead. So now we see in today's world, we have a lot of SaaS applications, a lot of IS applications. We are having mostly things on the clouds now, right? So with SD-WAN, it is easy to integrate the SD-WAN devices on the cloud towards the cloud. But with traditional architectures, it is very difficult to integrate with cloud because the very usual solution is to connect using IPsec tunnels and that is very much manual, right? But with SD-WAN, we have uh, automation inbuilt that we can uh, simply on a click, we can uh, spin up VM and we can roll out our uh, SD-WAN uh, devices, SD-WAN fabric on the cloud as well. We will see how we can do that, okay? And with SD-WAN, another advantage, uh, let me jot down, uh, My screen is visible, right? Okay. Yes. 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 So first is yes. we can use the multiple uh, diverse uh, transport diverse van links. Mixing of van links we can do. Uh, second is the uh, automation. When I say automation, we can we have a central platform from where we can do all sort of things that we do on daily basis, like uh, configuration, remote configuration on all devices, on one or more devices. We can centrally monitor all statistics, all health stats, for example, uh, CPU utilization of the devices, memory, any critical alarms. So it would be all available on one single page. It's called a single pane of glass where we can we, we do the things from day zero. When we say day zero, meaning device is not yet live. Our edge device, our remote device, let's say C router, it is not yet live into our SD-WAN network. From day zero, even from that day, we can integrate that device. We can we will do certain configuration on the remote devices, which are equivalent to CE routers. On those, on those devices, we will do such configuration that even from day zero, that device can fetch its configuration from central platform. So we need not do anything manual, day zero configuration, the initial configuration that we usually do by logging into console onto the router, that we need not do that. So it would be simply uh, connecting internet line onto the edge device onto the router so as soon the internet line would be connected to the device so it would connect to the central platform in very secure manner so sd van is a zero trust network 
when i say zero trust meaning it does not trust any device in its network until authenticated using certificates so zero trust network in sd wan network none of the device it trusts each other it will not connect to each other until they are authenticated using certificates so certificates can be provided by certificate authority ca so if you want to see a little about certificate if you want to read about you can do that even our laptop also has a certificate which is certified by certificate authority okay for example dg cert right there are several uh, certificate certification authorities so one of them is dg cert so our laptop also has a certificate similar to that we need each and every device in sd wan fabric to have the certificate so which would be the basis of the security that all the devices which are coming in into the sd wan network they are all part of secure network so certificate based authentication is the security so all sd wan devices they will build the secure ssl or tls based tunnel between each other so those tunnels would only be established when certificates are authenticated against each other so once those secure tunnels are built up then only the sd wan onboarding would start i mean then only all these devices would start exchanging the actual packets actual data packets between each other okay so this is the another advantage that we have security with the uh, automation we can configure we can remotely even we can remotely perform the ios upgrades on the devices we can remotely run um, commands on the edge devices to see what are the what is the output of show ip route let's say what is the output of status what is the traffic we we see on cisco route like show interface statistics sort of those things we can do since day one from one single pane of glass from one single page one common url of we manage it is one of the component of sd wan we will see what is the function of this component what are the other components so this is the another advantage that we have with sd wan so there are many other like we can integrate seamless integration uh, with seamless uh, integration with cloud be it uh, aws be it uh, microsoft or be it google so we can integrate seamlessly with the cloud we will see how we can do that so so these are the few advantages that we have over the traditional things because in traditional networking you cannot remotely perform all these things you cannot remotely have the statistics of all the devices right so this is these are the advantages uh, that we have with sd wan right so sd these are the common advantages of sd wan so now there are different flavors of sd wan for example piptela or cisco sd wan so why two names piptela was the first company which developed the sd wan yeah, yeah. sorry yeah, somebody saying again. something santosh could you mute please thanks so viptela was the first company who developed the sd wan and then cisco took over the viptela okay now since initially what viptela did they had their own proprietary hardware so all hardware devices which have their hardware or let's say software which has their name starting with small v let's say vh it is equivalent to c router okay we manage it is the management plane this is the central platform it was also developed by viptela so it is named as v okay v smart it's the control plane it handles all sort of routing we manage it is the management plane 
VEH. It is the forwarding plane. So all sort of the components which have their name starting with small v, they were developed by Viptela. But later, Cisco took over Viptela and now you will see very less places where you will see Viptela as even mostly you will see Cisco as even because initially as even solution was not available on the Cisco routers. Then what Cisco did, they developed the latest images, latest iOS images for iOS based, which are based on the iOS XE. Be it ISR 1000, ISR 4000, ASR, meaning on the other iOS images, sd -WAN is not feasible. It is only available on iOS XC devices. If you will go onto the traditional routers, ISR G1, there sd -WAN is not feasible. Okay. So this is Viptela sd -WAN or Cisco sd -WAN. Other flavors, let's say Meraki, they are also providing sd -WAN. We have Silver Peak, we have Versa, we have New Edge, Nokia New Edge, Polo Alto, Prisma. So there are many flavors who are providing this sd -WAN services. But Cisco sd -WAN is the most scalable, I would say, for largest and the complex networks. Cisco sd -WAN is the only option. Again, the reason is like they already have their reachability across different customers, different networks. Most of the customers, they are already using Cisco routers. So it is easy for them now to transform to sd -WAN just by upgrading the iOS image. But in case someone wants to go to other flavors of sd -WAN, they need to buy their proprietary hardware, software licenses, etc. Most of the most important is the skills because Cisco devices, everyone mostly on in the network world, they have got a chance to work on Cisco devices, right? So they are comfortable on the Cisco CLI, on the Cisco command line, Cisco architecture. So this is another reason of the uh, Cisco being very popular, okay? Now, we talked about advantages of sd -WAN. We talked about the flavors of sd -WAN. Now, let's see why exactly we need the sd -WAN or what are the dif different, uh, I would say, what is the architecture with, which creates sd -WAN. So sd -WAN is derived from SDN. So what SDN is? Software Defined Networking. So what is the main concept of SDN, Software Defined Networking, is to separate different planes, like control plane, data plane, and management plane. So after this discussion, the very first topic I would like to take would be the what is the difference between these planes, control plane, data plane, and management plane. Okay, so far so good. Yes, sir. Anyone? Yes. Any question? None, sir. Uh, no okay. questions. Thank you, sir. Okay. Are you guys good with the course speed? I mean, how we are moving? Is is it too slow? Is it too fast? Any comments? Uh, no, no, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So, the concept of SDN is separating the control plane, data plane, and management plane. Now, anyone wants to guess why exactly we want to do, why we want to separate the control plane, data plane, and management plane? Anyone wants to guess? I think okay. um, the traffic on the, also the routing. Mm -hmm. Yes, good. Yes. So, that is one of the important Monitoring points. will be done from the control panel. Uh, likewise, uh, handling the mm -hmm. networks such mm -hmm. as uh, CPU utilization, mm -hmm. as you mentioned in a mm -hmm. introduction mm -hmm. class. Uh, mm -hmm. In data plane, uh, we do the real routing, mm -hmm. means mm -hmm. transferring mm -hmm. the traffic from one, mm -hmm. one end to another end. And uh, management plant. <laughs> mm -hmm. no. Yes. Okay. So, because if you say, uh, when, when, when you say management plane, you don't know. I would say you are not able to explain, but you know very well, right? 
So when you tell net or SSH to a device, that is management pain. Okay. So you would be doing that thing on daily basis, right? Okay. Logging into the device, right? So that is management pain. So now why we want to separate these planes? Let's say if we talk about the traditional networking, we have, uh, let's say cloud, ISP, let's say Airtel, Tata, Alliance. We have different routers. Let's say these are the C routers. Router one, router two, router three. Now, what happens in traditional networking? Let's say we have a, a line to a provider, or let's say we have direct point to point link as well. Now, what will happen? Each of the device needs to run sort of the routing protocol. Let's say it runs BGP towards the let me write it down here. Let's say it runs BGP on the WAN lines here as well. And let's say it runs here as well. So now what will happen? Each of the device, each of the C router, it needs to handle the routing information, right? Also the forwarding of the packets. So now, with SEVN, what with the advantage that we have, uh, let me clean it up a bit. Now with SEVN, we have a centralized platform. Similarly, we have edge devices. Okay. So this centralized platform, which I have written, it is conclusive of all the components. I will write it down here. So very first, let's type it down here fee manage, which is the management plane. Okay. Second one is control plane, which is called as vSmart in SGBN terminology. So now all sort of routing is handled by vSmart. This guy is handling all sort of routing. These devices, these routers or edge devices, they are only handling forwarding of packets. So let's say this guy is sending its table, its routing table or routes to vSmart. So everybody, all edge devices, they will forward their routes to vSmart. Now, it's up to vSmart to decide which router should receive what routes. These edge routers, they are free of routing. They need not think about the topology hub and spoke point to point links, route maps, route filtering, etc. Nothing is needed on the edge devices. Everything is done on vSmart. So vSmart has taken the control plane responsibility of the network. So whatever was done in traditional networking on routing, sorry, on control plane basis, like running the routing, um, Let's say we are receiving multiple routes from multiple sites. Now we are edge routers. They needed to decide which route should be best, right? On checking the different attributes, different protocols. Then now that responsibility is now offloaded to vSmart. Be it four routers, be it 4,000 routers. All routers now, they will receive best path information from vSmart. vSmart is the brain. It acts as the RR route reflector, which we have in traditional networking, vSmart acts as route reflector. It is receiving the routes from respective sites and sharing with the other sites. So now it is the responsibility of the RR to say our network should be hub spoke or partial mesh or full mesh, whatever topology we want to do. Now it's up to vSmart. Whatever things we do on vSmart will define our topology. Okay. So this is the advantage with SD-WAN that we have offloaded the control plane responsibility from the edge routers towards the central platform, towards the vSmart. So these components, we manage vSmart and vBond. There is another device called as vBond. These three are conclusively called as controllers or 
EMS, Element Management System, or you can call it as controller. So wherever you will hear about controller in SD-WAN domain, just think of these three components, vManage, vSmart, and vBond. Okay. So these three components, they are the software machines. There are There is no specific hardware that you go to market and buy vManage. It's not the way to go. vManage is a software. We simply run a virtual machine. On that virtual machine, we download the image for vManage. Once we spin up then that VM with vManage image, our vManage would be functional. Okay, so we can deploy these controllers on Cisco cloud, on let's say other clouds or on our own premises. When I say on premises, we can buy our own bare metal server. Okay, x86, 8086, we must have uh, studied about uh, in case um, these microcontrollers, microprocessors. So 8086 processor based bare metal server, a plain blank server we can buy and we can create we can download hypervisors to create different virtual machines on the top of those those virtual machines we can install our images for example we manage we smart or we bond we can those machines would take different responsibility depending upon the image we installed okay so it's very much flexible that these controllers if we want to deploy on cisco cloud on other public or private clouds or on on-premises, okay? So now coming over to again, the SD-WAN thing, it stems from SDN um, separation of planes, like control plane we separated, it's now we need not run routing on each and every remote device, they are offloaded. They will simply have the best path advertised from vSmart. vSmart would tell them that this is the route and this would be your next stop. Right. Uh, Let's suppose. Uh, so yes, to disturb please. you. The, how the please connection uh, will be uh, uh, between uh, its router and vSmart? Uh, okay. So you mean the connection between the edge router to vSmart, right? Yes. Let's say this is V Edge. If I, it can be V Edge, which is the WebTela proprietary hardware. It can be C Edge, which could be Cisco router. Okay, so they are named as CH, but it could be Cisco router. So it's similar to it's it's applicable for other devices. So it would be one common WAN link, which would be going to vSmart, which would be going to vManage, which would be going to vBond. So it's one physical link. Let's say this is my gigabit zero slash zero interface. It has let's say MPLS or internet line. Similarly, there would be one router placed in front of controllers. Okay. So these components, we manage, we bond, sorry, we bond, we manage and we smart. They would be acting as a kind of LAN for this WAN router. There would be one interface on this router, which can be common for all the routers or it, there may be different WAN links on the router. Okay. So let's say this is gigabit zero slash zero also on the router, which is placed in front of controllers. Oh, okay. Okay. Got it. Thanks. Make sense. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. So more, uh, I would say uh, another, uh, so that was a good question. I appreciate that. Uh, you people are, uh, um, I mean, with could me. you please explain more, little more. Sure. So let's say, this is a provider. Okay. Let's say this is Airtel. It is providing the MPLS service. Now, what we can do, there would be Airtel provider. It would be providing a link to controller side as well. So there would be one link from Airtel to that C router, which is placed in front of controllers. Okay. Now we are connecting to Airtel MPLS. I hope uh, everybody is aware about this MPLS VPN. Even if not, feel free to raise. It would be good to understand, not only for SD WAN. I mean, for your uh, rest of the uh, network life, I would say. Okay. So these are the different 
this is the way how MPLS VPN is provided via provider. We have a C router, it is connected to provider router. It can be a router in Delhi. It can be in Mumbai. It can be in London. Okay. So now what's happening with MPLS VPN? The purpose of subscribing MPLS VPN from a provider is to have the connectivity that are this site, let's say site one, it can talk to site two. Site one will advertise their own subnets to provider. They will further cascade these subnets to router two. It would form the basis of the SD-WAN. So what happens with SD-WAN? There are overlay tunnels. When I say overlay, I see a very important topic. We will discuss in detail in a while. Overlay, underlay, and the difference between the planes. Because without this, I don't see any use of going ahead with SD-WAN. Okay. So these are the fundamentals. These are the pillars. We first need to understand what is overlay underlay and what are different planes. Okay. For, for now, just to keep the track. So we have overlay tunnels of over initiating from this interface gigabit zero slash zero of the edge router to the V smart. It has a tunnel endpoint, but the physical path again would be starting from V smart till this WAN router via provider cloud going this path. Okay. Does it make sense? Yes. yes sir. Any question? Any doubt? Yeah, uh, this uh, uh, the connectivity between the Edge and the uh, mm -hmm. VSmart, it can be either MPLS or, or it can be ILL also or it, it has yes. to be Anything. It should be reachable. Okay. Their IP addresses should be able to ping to each other, be it via any sort of connectivity. Okay. Got it. Okay. This I example I took just for MPLS VPN. So, okay. uh, so we will mm -hmm. uh, create a tunnel between edge router to VA Smart or uh, directly from uh, when uh, when router to the VA Smart. So, when you say when router, you are talking about this router too, or this edge device you are talking about? No, no, no. I'm. Uh, I'm asking to, um, how from mm -hmm. which, from which mm -hmm. router we will create a tunnel. So the VS that tunnel would be created between the edge devices, this one, all these edge devices towards vManage as well as towards vSmart. Okay. Okay. There would be two tunnels, one to vManage and one to vSmart they would be permanent tunnels okay. and those are not the static tunnels. Once the IP reachability is there, all the softwares are properly set up. These tunnels would be connected automatically with very important prerequisite certificates. Certificate is based off the authentication. Certificate is equivalent to pre-shared key that we use with IPsec tunnels. Okay. Okay, sir. Yes, good. So now there is another component we are seeing V bond. So control plane is V smart. Right. Data yeah. plane are the edge devices itself. They form direct tunnels as well between them as part of SV1 fabric. So the role of these direct tunnels is to forward the packets. These tunnels would only be using, only be used to Some. forward the actual packets. Somebody saying something? No, okay. So we have control plane tunnels or control tunnels, which would be between the edge devices towards the controller, towards vSmart as well as towards vManage. Now, let's say we have two tunnels, 
two controllers. One, we manage. Two, we smart. Role of the tunnel to we manage is to capture the statistics, health of the device, utilization on each interface on each tunnel, CRC errors, CPU utilization, application based utilization, top talkers which users are utilizing the most what what are the top most utilized applications everything show log show running configuration sys logs who made what changes what's happening on the device everything is captured from the edge device to we manage via control plane tunnels or via control tunnel which is ssl or tls based okay so this is the role of we manage and the tunnel from we managed to edge device that it will capture the health statistics now that is part of management plane okay so here we manage is now acting as the management plane earlier what was happening in traditional networking we had snmp server on some central place that was going capturing the data from the other devices so it's similar so it's similar to the traditional that we had SNMP server on central location. We could capture different statistics that those statistics were published on, let's say, uh, some InfoVista or Cacti on different type of servers, right? Solar winds. So equivalent to that. But we have the different uh, things here, like it's with vManage, it is secure. It has um, more detailed dashboard about each device, what's happening over there. We can we, while sitting on vManage, we can log into edge devices, we can run the command. We need not go have the CLI login, although we have CLI login, but we need not go log into each of the, and every device to run the command on CLI. While sitting on vManage, we will simply click a tab of show IP routes. It will give us the routing information of the respective device. It can give us the CRC errors, or it can we it can help us see duplex CRC errors, auto negotiation, etc. Sort of all those things that we check via CLI, we can see on vManage using GUI portal. Okay, so two permanent tunnels vManage is for management plane to capture the management statistics. vSmart is the control plane tunnel again. It is for control plane information. It carries the routing information from edge device to vSmart and from vSmart to vH. There is no direct routing between different edges. So very important to understand if you want to make a note of it, there would not be any routing protocol running between these edges. They would simply be forwarding the packets. There would be secure tunnels built up between these edges and those tunnels would only be used to send the traffic, to send the actual traffic. There is no route exchange across these devices. Route exchange is from edge to vSmart, edge to vSmart, edge to vSmart, different edges to vSmart. But there is no direct route exchange between these edges. Okay, are we good? Any question? So, uh, is there any synchronization process between V manage and V smart? Uh, suppose we have a, a, mm -hmm. a direct route uh, between edge to V smart and that mm -hmm. route goes down. Mm -hmm. So how V manage will uh, check or uh, mm -hmm. check that route that is that is being mm -hmm. okay? Good down. Yes, good. I really appreciate for these questions because until and unless there is question i see i have doubt that if we are learning if there are questions then only i feel that we are now learning the things right so there is permanent tunnel between we managed to we smart as well okay okay okay, I, okay. okay. okay but these this tunnel is not used for any sort of forwarding of traffic or anything it is just a management plane it we manage the tunnel between we manage and we smart is just to know it's, it's just 
for we manage to know that we smart is here and whatever things we are doing between we manage and we smart there is no role of the edge devices or the communication towards the edge devices between we manage and we smart okay okay we will see in detail how how it is separate how, how i mean on the granular level we will see what all things happen on all these control connections we will see in very detail yes okay okay so just for the uh, you know sync uh, synchronization of everyone's learning here right so we have separation of the different planes control plane handled by we smart data plane handled by edge devices management plane handled by we manage uh, okay mm -hmm. yes you know very was now supposing the connectivity between we smart and the edge device goes down for any reason whether mm -hmm. the Uh, traffic will flow via the uh, 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 that uh, connected edge devices so um for uh, i would say my answer is yes but i would uh, just for everybody's understanding uh, because for someone uh, you know for few people it might be ambiguous how it could be possible like because let's say we have a one link only this is gigabit 0/0 it is only used for the tunnel to we smart as well as it is used for see tunnel is initiated from this to we smart similarly to other devices now what could be the use case can someone help me understand what could be the use case where over same physical link one tunnel is down to we smart but to the other device it is up could you think of such use case okay. yes maybe there is a virtual yes so there are multiple uh, things again this thing also we will detail uh, we will discuss in detail but there may be the case when because these are the virtual tunnels so there may be problem in the path towards we smart that there is some problem in that path but towards the other edge devices it is fine right so now and this is another beauty of sd van even if the connection to we smart is down even if we smart is not sharing the updated routing information to this device but still they can talk to each other with the stale information for specified period of time let's say 8 hours we can change that to 7 days but by default it is 8 hours so in case the tunnel between edge device to we smart is down these edge devices would keep talking to each other for let's say 8 hours so the traffic flow will not get impacted because of the because of the impact between of course the, okay. of course yeah. for 8 hours after 8 hours it would be down yeah but we can, manually, we can manually configure it up to 7 days yes okay thanks welcome okay so this we talked about the different advantages sorry uh, the components how it is stems from sdn software defined networking three concepts of separation of the planes so these are used by sd van okay so very yeah i would say important things important advantages i would say on daily basis are the sitting on we manage we are simply uh, sitting on we manage looking at the whole lot of statistics how many devices are up how many total devices are there in the network how many are up how many are down what is the ios on all the devices we can see simply on one page itself okay so just a moment let me uh, see uh, i i started my lab so just a moment i wanted to show you this the glass of we manage how it looks like just a moment so are you able to share your labs for us yes it would be there for each and every person each and every one will have their own dedicated instance for lab thank you sir welcome thank you sir
just bear with me it is taking a bit longer uh, because uh, this i need to switch on this is the windows machine just bear with me and uh, guys uh, i'm i'm stopping youtube live now and uh, i'll tell you uh, if in case from tomorrow onward you have to join your class through your portal this is a public link which i shared yesterday for everyone but from tomorrow onward you you can see the link in your portal and you'll join directly from that particular id